Welcome to Castle Hill this week. Let's come together to gather in prayer. Loving God, be among us in grace and truth, and a love that holds us as we are, that we might be here and know a compassion that calls us, forgives us, renews us, and sets us free again. Be among us in peace peace that fills us with hope again, that speaks into a future that is possible and positive, filled with your way of life's gifts. Be among us with patience and a reorientation of ourselves once more towards the light you bring that holds us in a place where we can see again who you are for each of us and who we are for you and each other, forgiven, renewed and set free. Here is as we join in our family prayer, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Listen for a word from God from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to improve them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fingers their, and their images long. They love to have the place of honour at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi, but you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher, and you are all students, and call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who, who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The muse who inspired gospel writers to record their experiences, got them to write them down. They come in many versions, so when we hear them being read, we're probably meant to recognise ourselves in them. Not that we find ourselves doing that very often. We've taken refuge, almost a kind of protection, in the distance between us and then maybe we can hide behind the terms like Pharisees and scribes and breathe like a sigh of relief and say, I'm not them. But the Bible invites us to be a little more daring and honest. And it doesn't take much to strip away the names and find ourselves right there. Jesus staring at you and me. 
do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach at hearts. You see, the Bible isn't so much history. It's your story and my story. To read it properly, you really ought to be able to hear all these things directed to each of us where we are. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. What do we hear? When do we hear it like that? We hear it like that when the Bible lives again in this world at this time. And such words as these today hit the mark once more. Such words speak into the polarisation and divisions in our communities and nations today. That we are better, we are first. The exceptionalism of how we talk and respond to things. There have been many examples of that recently. A world-beating track and trace system, for example. It only needs to be one that works. But it's boasting that is buried in such descriptions. It was an exaggeration based on a nostalgic way of thinking about ourselves as having to be better. It comes from a way of seeing the world where there is a whole system that keeps some downtrodden. And of course, America first, exactly the same. Vaccine races, exactly the same. Trade wars and Brexit, exactly the same. Jesus is taking on the power structure and unravelling it, offering instead the kingdom way, which is all about equality. So when we hear these passages and we dare find ourselves in them, we have to swallow hard and take the knock. This gospel is not going to keep those in power comfortable, or at least it shouldn't. But we are quite good at corrupting the truth of the gospel to suit ourselves. So perhaps the way to respond to this passage is firstly with hum humility. Stand there ourselves as individuals, family members, workers and managers, and especially as churches, and listen and hear Jesus' words. Not to the Pharisees, but to us. And hear not just a debate, but hear an invitation about how we can re rebuild after this pandemic with a different kind of dynamic. Not world beating, but kingdom growing. Not over others, but with others. Jesus is saying something has gone wrong. The Pharisees were good guys generally, but the power changed them. And the kingdom is calling us back, all of us who hear ourselves in this, to an equal community where the greatest is the servant. And let the lesson of humility reshape our relationships, our neighbourhood, and our congregations. Let's pray. Loving God beyond our walls, computer screens, newspapers, and social media, God found in the world, in coffee plantations and garment factories and banana fields and nail bars, God found in all the places where we lay burdens on the shoulders of others. Hear us. And when you hear our words, O oh God, challenge us with the world, the relationships, the decisions we make. Convict us with the weight of the kingdom. God of justice, 
may our prayers be less about words and more about living. So in our living now, in different lockdowns and growing cases of COVID, may we choose humility for the sake of another's life. In our nations and communities, as the virus exposes more and more of the least among us, and a society that has made the least the most vulnerable and revealed a way of politics that can cannot handle the truth, may we find humility our greatest gift. And as our future as a nation is negotiated, and as power balances shift, and as we find a world more nearly more ready to blame those least like us. May we find humility what we practice and in our own families and among our friends and neighbours, among those who are ill and lonely and vulnerable, those who cannot meet, those who are worried, those who grieve but cannot fully do so yet. May we find humility a place filled with compassion and begin there to shape tomorrow and each day after that in your name. So be it. My friends, go in peace and live in it and share it generously. May God, our Creator, Companion and Comforter, bless us and ours evermore. Amen. Take care. Keep safe. God bless.